For a given function in terms of t1 and t2, we have to find whether this function is an autocorrelation auto function or not. The given function is min of t1 and t2. To find out whether it's an autocorrelation function or not, we will we'll have to prove if it, it's, it has a positive definite or not. Uh, for example, if we have a series of uh, number uh, points which ranges from t1 to through tn, where we have a condition that t1 is less than t2 is less than t3 and so on up till tn, then what will be the autocorrelation matrix? Every term rij would be ti, where ti is less than tj. So in this case, r can be written as this extent, uh, expected, expected value of x t1 into x uh, t2 conjugate. Now we'll have to show that whether this uh, expected value is a positive definite or not. To prove that, we take a scalar, um, we take a scalar matrix, and uh, it can be real or complex, and then we take a conjugate R A, and we have to prove that if this um, product is a positive number, uh, positive definite, then this um, function is an autocorrelation function. So for that, we have A uh, conjugate X X T one xt2 conjugate into it. Now we can see that this, if we consider this as y, then this is y conjugate. And in other words, we can say that their product would be the square of magnitude. And the expected value of a positive number would always be a positive number, which is greater than zero. So we can say that r is a definite, positive definite. Now for, um, for the given function, we, uh, we have the following matrix. This was the generic rule to find uh, autocorrelation function. Now for this given function, we have th this kind of a matrix in which first row and first column are T1. And then from A2 to two, we, onwards, we have T2. And similarly here, we have to do up till Tn. Now uh, to prove that this is a positive definite, we just uh, take T1 out of the matrix such that we have a matrix of all T1s and the rest is first column and first row would be zero and the other and from other elements we'll be subtracting T2 from each element. Now the for, for, for the first part we can write it as T1 taking T1 as common the, the matrix F would be a matrix containing ones only which can be written as a column vector into a row vector containing ones only. Similarly, from the second part, we can take T2 minus T1 in common. Hmm. This term is found as we have actually we had um, T3 minus T1 here and we subtracted T2 minus T1 from this term. So we are left with actually T3 minus T2. Similarly, the same pattern will be followed throughout the matrix and we, we will get um, the whole matrix would be Subt uh, T2 minus T1 would be uh, subtracted from the whole matrix. Similarly, uh, following the same pattern, we can, can uh, we can take T2 minus T1 common and write the uh, the other matrix in terms of a product of a column matrix into a row matrix. Similarly, the last term would be Tn minus Tn minus one, and the uh, column and row matrix would be containing all the zeros except the last term would be. One. Now here we can see the analogy that we have the first scalar multipl uh, multiplier with each term which we can identify as mu k. Then we have um, a column matrix which is a which is identified as a k and then we have a row matrix which are which we are calling as a k transpose. Now we the value of k would range from 1 to n and uh, by taking the summation of all this we have the same matrix. Now taking element wise mu k would always be positive, a k and a k transport would also be positive. So this whole term is always positive. So we have proved that this is an autocorrelation function. Now considering another autocorrelation function in of t1 and t2 which is the product of t1 t2. As this is also not, uh, this would also be positive all the time. So this is also an, a valid autocorrelation auto function. If we take a linear combination of this autocorrelation function and the um, initial autocorrelation function, which was R T1 T2 as min of T1 T2, 
then we, we will get another autocorrelation function. Uh, for example, if we multiply both t1 and t2 with a scalar uh, lambda, what we will get? One of the autocorrelation functions would be lambda min of t1, t2, and the other function would become lambda square t1, t2. And if we add these two autocorrelation function, we'll get another autocorrelation function. Which is actually the autocorrelation function of a Poisson random variable. With parameter lambda t. So we can say that if we have a scalar or linear combination of two autocorrelation functions, we get another autocorrelation function.